Church has been working hard today and uncovered other new information showing that Christopher Steele was leaking the contents of the dirty Russian dossier to gullible reporters uh, before the election at the request of Fusion GPS during the fall of 2016. A dossier even Steele did not believe in. I thought it was bad when foreigners tried to influence our election. I guess it's okay if your name's Hillary Clinton and you're a Democrat. By the way, can you say Russian collusion? Also tonight, we will kindly remind everyone on the left that the President of the United States has constitutional, broad, and absolute authority to remove the security clearance of any American. And yesterday, after years of serious misconduct, the President rightfully stripped Obama's ex-CIA chief, John Brennan, from these top secret privileges. Predictably, your mainstream media is now absolutely apoplectic and outraged, some even claiming that Brennan's right to freedom of speech is infringed. In moments, we will help these people try and understand the difference between a constitutional right and a governmental privilege. Plus, we'll also walk you through a deep dive of every high-ranking former or current official. They all should have their security clearances revoked. We'll give you names and the reason why. And stay tuned for another shining example of the left's ever-increasing Trump derangement syndrome. And we also have an important update in Paul Manafort's trial of the century as jury deliberations is about to enter day two. And the jury asked the judge, well, they want more of a definition of what is reasonable doubt. They want it redefined. All right, sit tight, buckle up. Why? We begin with tonight's breaking news, opening monologue. All right, again tonight, Sarah Carter has unearthed one of the most revealing pieces of information in the ongoing saga between Bruce Orr and Christopher Steele. Now, for nearly two weeks, we have been showing you dozens of communications between Orr, who was one the, once the fourth highest ranking person at Obama's DOJ, and ex-foreign spy Christopher Steele. Now, these new texts, emails, handwritten notes have provided evidence of a seedy, unusual relationship between these two, including a coordinated effort to push the contents of Steele's dirty, unverified Russian dossier all throughout the DOJ and the FBI. And just tonight, Sarah Carter has uncovered one more handwritten memo from Bruce Orr recording a phone conversation that he had with Christopher Steele. In the memo, Orr writes that Steele is, quote, very concerned about the Comey hearing and afraid they will be exposed. Now, this is on top of the text that Sarah first revealed right here last night, showing that Steele was concerned about whether or not, plural, firewalls will stay intact ahead of Comey's upcoming hearing. So you have Christopher Steele worried about being exposed, and for good reason. After all, it was Christopher Steele. He worked on Hillary Clinton's op research team in 2016. He put together the Clinton bought and paid for dirty Russian dossier full of Russian lies, salacious, unverified, uncorroborated. Even Steele himself wouldn't stand by it. Under oath in Great Britain, he said, well, it may not be true at all. It's raw intelligence. It was Christopher Steele who then used Bruce Orr to spread all this Russian propaganda throughout the highest levels of our federal government and to you, the American people. And now, thanks to the reporting also tonight from Catherine Herridge, we know it was Christopher Steele who was leaking the contents of his phony dossier to your gullible news media in this country in the fall of 2016, all at the behest and request of Fusion GPS, who, by the way, was not only being paid by, paid by Hillary Clinton, and the DNC. We now know Fusion GPS. Oh, remember that Russian lawyer? The one that was in the infamous Trump Tower meeting? Oh yeah, she was paying Fusion GPS. And by the way, don't forget Simpson met with the lawyer both before and after that meeting at Trump Tower. And we know Christopher Steele and Simpson were clearly pushing their Russian lies. They all knew it was total BS. By the way, that's why Steele wanted the firewall. That's why he's scared to death he will get caught. Now, a moment, Sarah Carter and Catherine Herridge will join us for a full report. But first, let's take a deep dive into President Trump's very important security clearance review and several current and former high-ranking officials. Now, yesterday, the president stripped top secret access from comrade John Brennan, and for good reason. Now, last night, as we demonstrated how Brennan clearly violated the CIA policy, it says, quote, in the case of former CIA directors, the agency holds that their security clearance and renews it every five years for the rest of their lives. However, that requires former CIA directors to behave like current CIA employees. Well, that's not Brennan. 
Now, he also used his security clearance to validate conspiracy theories that he's regularly pushing and getting paid for on MSNBC and leaking, of course, sensitive information to the general public as it relates to the dossier through Harry Reid, then to a letter public that's made to Comey. But the mainstream media, they don't care about the truth or any of this. Some are now actually claiming John Brennan's First Amendment rights are infringed. He's on TV 24-7. What are they talking about? Take a look. This is a dictatorial exercise of power that should frighten and call on all Republicans to say, Mr. President, you cannot do this. You are trying to inhibit the free speech of people who may be in opposition to you. To use this kind of punishment to chill speech is a violation of the First Amendment. I mean, this is a, a, a striking move towards authoritarianism. You know, this is what dictators do. They shut down the press, they shut down dissent, they jail their opponents, or in this case, they, they steal their security clearance. What happened here was a pure authoritarian act from an intemperate president who wanted to punish one of his critics. Nothing more, nothing less. The White House line. is threatening he, him right now by taking he is, away and he his said, security he clearance. Said, and they've already, they've he already said, great, it, it doesn't influence but my But they've already commentary. taken it away from, from John so Biden. So I, doesn't that say to everybody else, shut your mouth? This is all dumb, ignorant, and frankly, patently absurd, as John Brennan continues to spew his anti-Trump hatred all over conspiracy TV, MSNBC. Oh, uh, one other important point. A security clearance, for those of you that have never read the Constitution and claim you're a journalist, uh, it's not a constitutional privilege, uh, right. It's a privilege. And according to the U.S. Supreme Court, Navy v. Egan, a U.S. president, has the authority to revoke any clearance with or without stated reason. Currently, the administration is reviewing the status of nine clearances. Now, with the help of our good friend, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett, let's break down why each of the people you see on the screen should be in serious jeopardy of losing their secret access. Tonight, we start with James Clapper. Without a doubt, he should be stripped of his security clearance as soon as humanly possible. He, like Brennan, also misuses his clearance to validate and also monetize his hatred of President Trump every time he's on TV. Brennan on Conspiracy TV, MSNBC, Clapper doing the same thing on fake news CNN. Take a look. The, the values, standards, the institutions that, that I and others uh, spent uh, the major part of our professional lives uh, defending and upholding are under assault by our very own president. That I really do wonder whether the Russians uh, have something uh, on him. I really question, question uh, his uh, ability to, uh, his fitness to be in this office. And I also uh, am beginning to wonder uh, about uh, his, his motivation for it. Uh, this past weekend is illustrative of uh, what a great case officer uh, Vladimir Putin is. He knows how to handle uh, an asset, and that's what he's doing with the president. Now, that's not the only reason Clapper should forfeit his clearance. Now, before his time at Fake News CNN, while serving as the director of national intelligence, well, Clapper was accused of leaking sensitive information to his future employer, CNN, the company that employs him now. And let's not forget when Clapper lied under oath in front of Congress. Take a look. Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not. Not wittingly. There are cases where they could in inadvertently, perhaps, uh, collect, but not, not wittingly. Now, of course, we know that the exact opposite is true. The NSA was collecting the data. He knew about it. Next, let's turn to Jimmy Comey. Yeah, he's, his access is already gone, but he's still eligible for future access. And as Greg Jarrett lists multiple reasons, Comey should be permanently losing his eligibility, including his improper conduct in the Clinton investigation, the fact that he stole government property. Remember the handwritten memos about the president? Remember he leaked that potentially classified information, those memos, to a professor friend to give to the New York Times. And he also likely misled the FISA court about the Steele dossier that he was supposed to verify and never did. And then he lied about that during his book tour. We'll remind you. You called the dossier unverified, salacious. Why did you use that to the FISA court to ask for surveillance for Carter Page? Not only use it, but you led with it. A bulk of that FISA application deals with that dossier. 
Why? Yeah, that's not my recollection, Brett. And I don't know that the FISA application has been released. My recollection was it was part of a broader mosaic of facts that were laid before the FISA judge to obtain a FISA warrant. There was a lot more than the dossier in the FISA application? My recollection was there was a significant amount of additional material about Page and why there was probable cause to believe he was an agent of a foreign power. And the dossier was part of that, but was not all of it or a critical part of it, to so my recollection. Unreal. We now know the dossier did, in fact, make up the bulk of the application. It's an irrefutable fact at this point. Next up, well, let's look at Peter Strzok. He was also fired for improper conduct. His extreme bias, his willingness to act on that bias is a reason alone. He should never have a clearance again. We also have his mistress, Lisa Page, the one-time FBI lawyer, also complicit as it relates to Strzok's bias and his attempts to, quote, stop it meaning stop Trump from ever becoming president, and then of course the insurance policy, and then there's Andrew McCabe. He was fired for lying. He was also involved in signing off on that fake FISA application that willfully misled FISA court judges, by the way, and the American people. And we got Sally Yates also fired for, for insubordination. She signed off on one of the FISA applications. Susan Rice, she lied all over the place, over and over, about Benghazi when they knew better. A matter of national security. Really? Knowingly? Lying? Get rid of her clearance. Next, you got Michael Hayden. Greg Jarrett is calling his security clearance case, quote, questionable. But remember, Hayden is currently employed by CNN as a talking head. And finally, we end on Bruce Orr. He was once the fourth highest ranking member of the DOJ before being demoted twice. Why? For failing to disclose his wife's employment at Fusion GPS. We can add Christopher Steele to the mix now. In fact, Orr was actively working on an investigation into Trump-Russia collusion while his wife was being paid by the Clinton campaign to dig up dirt on Trump. Orr appears also to have filed a false financial disclosure report in order to prevent the government from knowing the true nature of his wife's work. In moments, Greg Jarrett will join us with more analysis, but without a doubt, the Trump administration was right in the case of Brennan and now should revoke all of these clearances as soon as possible. All right, now we turn to our daily roundup of the most deranged Trump haters, and tonight we're featuring this absurd comment. Yeah, once again, Conspiracy TV, MSNBC. Take a look. I like the idea that, that, that you know, you see use the examples, the bad example of like what would be the core that would say it was okay for Donald Trump to dissolve media institutions because media institutions are super unpopular. I would like a pollster to test this question. How many people in the Republican Party think that it would be okay for Donald Trump to dissolve their own grandparents? I'm virtually certain that if it was a Donald Trump related question, you'd get like 10% that would be like, Donald Trump has the power to do whatever he wants, including kill my parents. And today, President Trump gave his own take on the media's Trump derangement syndrome, tweeting, quote, There is nothing that I would want more for our country than true freedom of the press. The fact is that the press is free to write and say anything they want. But much of what it says is fake news, pushing a political agenda, or just plain trying to hurt people. Honesty wins. Maybe that's why you've made us number one, and we thank you for it. Expect the media's rhetoric, by the way, to get worse and worse as the most important midterms of our lifetime well, gets closer. We're only 82 days away. Now, this week, Congressman Keith Ellison, he won the Democratic primary in his race to be the next Attorney General of Minnesota, but not without some serious controversy. Now, Ellison's ex-girlfriend, a woman named Karen Monahan, is accusing him of serious domestic abuse, a claim backed up by Monaghan's son, who took to Facebook and wrote that Ellison put his mother through, quote, pure hell, and that he had personally seen hundreds of threatening text messages from Ellison, and even a video of Ellison, about two minutes long, assaulting his mother, including one instance where he allegedly dragged her by her feet off the bed, all while screaming and cursing at her. Now, these are charges that Ellison vehemently denies, but the DNC is now investigating these claims, and Robbie Mook of the Clinton campaign saying, don't campaign with this guy. We'll keep you posted as this story develops. And finally tonight, we have another update in the trial of the century, Paul Manafort's 2005 tax case and bank fraud case. Well, the jury, they wrapped up day one of deliberations without reaching a verdict. The jury did, however, submit four questions to Judge Ellis, including one asking him, to define or redefine reasonable doubt. That was maybe a good sign for Manafort, but I caution you. Remember, you can't glean too much from a question of a jury, and over 90% of federal cases result in a guilty verdict. The odds are not in Manafort's favor.
Keep in mind, as the media storm ramps up on this, this case has nothing, zero, Mr. Mueller, to do with Russia. Zero, Mr. Mueller, to do with any collusion. Zero, Mr. Mueller, to do with the 2016 campaign. And zero to do, Mr. Mueller, with Donald Trump. And this all comes as the wife of one of Mueller's targets, George Papadopoulos, who was just on with Tucker, is calling for her husband to scrap that plea deal that he made with Mueller and sue the government. We'll let you know if Papadopoulos takes his wife's advice. And by the way, takes on the aggressive tactics of Team Mueller. A lot of ground, a lot of news we're breaking. Joining us now, investigative reporter, Fox News contributor, Sarah Carter, the author of the now three weeks in a row, number one New York Times bestseller, The Russian Hoax, The Illicit Scheme to Clear Hillary Clinton Framed Donald Trump, Fox News legal analyst, Greg Jarrett. Now, Judge Pirro was number one. You knocked her off. But she's number and two, I feel so badly I think, I think you're that. both doing pretty good. She's a friend. I feel badly about that. Uh, she's, you know. No, you don't feel badly about that. You want to be number one. Stop. That's, you're totally full of it. Uh, you're happy you're number one. It's okay. She made number one, too. Okay. Um, all right, Sarah, let's, let's go back to last night, and then let's go to the developments that we have today. You know, Steele writing, or, hey, any news? Uh, we're uh, a bit apprehensive given the scheduled appearance in Congress on Monday and hoping the fire walls will haul. Uh, will hold firewalls plural sorry I have no news I believe my earlier information is still accurate I'll let you know if, immediately if something changes well now we know that there's a new development tonight a handwritten message after a call with Orrin Steele or writes the message I'll let you pick it up from there well this is what's so fascinating Sean I mean even back when Comey was going to testify in 2017 in March that was two days before he talks about the firewall he hopes these firewalls will hold and that's what Christopher Steele tells Bruce Orr and then later months later he sends a very important text message saying you know I'm very concerned about the Comey hearing or is I, I I mean he talks to or on the phone uh, Christopher Steele I'm concerned about the Comey hearing I'm, I'm afraid that will be exposed and that's because at the time the Senate Judiciary Committee Charles Grassley started to ask a lot of questions. Who is this Christopher Steele? How was he involved with the FBI? What information was he sharing? And at this point, they knew that all the firewalls that they had built up were about to start crumbling down. Okay, now, Greg, let's get into this. I hope the firewalls, plural, hold. Right. Two days before Comey is set to testify before Congress. Now we go a step deeper, very concerned about the Comey hearing, afraid we will be exposed. Uh, okay, firewalls, holding, right. afraid we're going to be exposed. Um, it, you, I thought the whole Mueller thing was we're not supposed to have foreign nationals uh, trying to influence our, our elections. And now we got Christopher Steele spreading his lies and propaganda vis-a-vis... Right. -vis Fusion GPS to the gullible media, and he knows and testifies under oath. He doesn't even believe his own dossier, the own BS he wrote. But That's yet right. they're peddling and this to the American a, people. He's not even a foreign national. He is a foreigner on the FBI's bankroll and payroll and on Hillary Clinton's payroll. And Sarah's reporting is right. He fears the Senate Intelligence Committee. He fears Comey. Uh, he fears Senator Grassley in particular, uh, that he's going to be implicated and busted and exposed for his illegal behavior. I also have here handwritten notes uh, in the handwriting of Bruce Orr. Uh, March 15th, he writes, special counsel, right to question in UK. <laughs> in other words, he doesn't want to be forced to answer questions under oath. On that same day, he says, he urges Bruce Orr, must protect sources. In other words, him. He's the main source, the phony fabricated but, but, dossier. Let me ask both of you, what the hell is wrong with Robert Mueller? Because you have a foreign national spy paid for by Clinton through Fusion GPS that also has Russia as a client meeting before and after the infamous Trump Tower meeting. He's spreading these lies. He doesn't believe in his own dossier. Russian lies to influence the American people so that they'll vote for the chosen candidate, Hillary, over Donald Trump. There's a Russia conspiracy. There's Russia, you know, uh, there's, there's Russian influence. There's foreign outsiders. 
What are they? What is wrong with them that sure. they can't follow the simple things that we have discovered and reported now over a year, Sarah Carter? Sean. Exactly what they are trying to accuse the Trump administration of doing is what they were doing all along. And the fact that Robert Mueller has all of this evidence, this is not just circumstantial evidence. This is an enormous amount of note. documented evidence. Exactly. Handwritten notes, conversations, testimony. You know, they're going to be questioning Bruce Orr on August 28th. And this is very important because Bruce Orr holds the key to what happened here. And I would also like to know... Who at the FBI authorized Bruce Orr to be the conduit for Christopher Steele? Even more importantly than that, when did the FBI know that Christopher Steele was actually leaking information to the media at the behest of Glenn Simpson? And he knows his BS. He knows and it's Russian lies. He doesn't believe his own dossier. You know, that's right. I, I, I've got to be honest. Then you got Mueller and this idiotic Manafort tax fraud issue. How in God's name did that become part of the Russia collusion investigation as he ignores all of the incontrovertible evidence in your book that you've been reporting, Sarah, in your book, Greg? Yeah, you know, Bruce Orr has a lot to answer for in deposition. So does because, Mueller. You know, there are 60 pages here and he'll be asked in detail. What did you mean in this conversation with Christopher Steele? And I, I think at the end of the day, we're not only going to find rampant corruption, but that the law was egregiously violated. So disgustingly corrupt, such a double standard. If our, if our republic is going to survive, our constitutional republic, we'd better get to the bottom of this. We know there was influence, except it was on their side. We have the evidence, they have nothing. They're doing tax cases from 2005 and wasting our time and money. When we come back, thank you both. Catherine Herridge, major new information as we continue our news about Bruce Orr's communications with Christopher Steele in the final months of the 2016 campaign. They were feeding you lies. Then we'll get reaction. Joe DeGeneva, Pam Bondi, straight ahead. Bruce Orr's handwritten notes and emails during the 2016 election season. Our chief intelligence correspondent, Catherine Herridge, has more on this breaking news. Catherine. Sean, a review by Fox News of Bruce Orr's Justice Department emails and handwritten notes shows he is deeply connected to the Trump dossier and the scandal over alleged government surveillance abuse. During closed-door congressional testimony last year, the co-founder of Fusion GPS, Glenn Simpson, the firm behind the dossier, claimed no contact with Orr until after the 2016 election. But Orr's work emails conflict with Simpson's testimony, showing contact months earlier. Orr's wife, Nellie, worked for Fusion GPS, the firm hired by the DNC and Clinton campaign for the Trump dossier, based on former British spy Christopher Steele's research. After the FBI dropped Steele as a source in November 2016, the Republican-led House Intelligence Committee found that Steele maintained contact using Orr as a back channel. In December 2016, Orr's notes also indicate a meeting with Glenn Simpson in Washington, D.C.'s Chinatown, with Orr writing, quote, Glenn gave me a memory stick. Today, the Justice Department declined to comment on Orr, who is scheduled to give a closed-door interview to congressional investigators August 28th. Congressman Jim Jordan told Fox the focus is on Orr's handling of the dossier and how the dossier rolled into the surveillance warrant for a Trump campaign aide. Bruce Orr's wife worked for the firm that the Clintons hired to put together the dossier. She's given it to Bruce Orr. He's given it to the FBI. It is never supposed to work that way in the United States of America. The Orr documents reviewed by Fox News shed more light on the British spy, Christopher Steele. When FBI Director James Comey was fired by President Trump last year, Orr wrote that Steele, quote, was very concerned about Comey's firing, afraid they will be exposed. Sean? All right, Catherine, thank you. And joining us now with more reaction, Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi, former U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia, Joe DeGeneva. Full disclosure, Joe once did some legal work for me, and uh, I would hire him again in a heartbeat, and Pam, and uh, he was at my Christmas party. Um, but, you know, here's what we have. We, get, we got Mueller's team looking at a 2005 tax case. That has nothing to do with the election, Trump, the campaign, nothing. Russia, nothing. But here we do have Russian lies being fed by Christopher Steele, who didn't even believe them through Fusion GPS, propagandizing and misinforming purposely the American people to steal an election. And then we have Russian lies literally, you know, handed to our gullible news media by these people. Then you got, 
you know, steel, the dossier, Fusion GPS, Brennan, all leaking it, Joe DeGeneva, all of them. And they all Remem know it's total BS. Remember, Sean, if Hillary Clinton had won, we would know none of this. And that's why the Trump victory is so important to the rule of law, notwithstanding what the press says about the president. There was a brazen plot to exonerate Hillary Clinton, and if she lost, to frame Donald Trump. Part of that plot involved a conspiracy with Bruce Orr, Steele, Sally Yates, John Brennan, James Comey, Peter Strzok, and other senior FBI and DOJ officials who determined that they were going to destroy a president after he was duly elected. It is absolutely essential that notwithstanding anything that Robert Mueller is doing, that the Attorney General and the Deputy Attorney General ensure that there is a federal grand jury to investigate all of the things surrounding Orr and Steele and Yates and everybody else. This is so obvious, a junior lawyer in any prosecutor's office would want this case and would oh, run with it. Run with it. And, that's if the, if, point. and if the Attorney General and the Deputy Attorney General don't do it, the President should fire them. If Hillary Rodham Clinton pays for these Russian lies, uh, Pam yep. Bondi, she and did. Fusion GPS, and Brennan, the CIA director at the time, and Christopher Steele, a foreign national, no, it's not true. Because we know under oath he'd said, I don't know if it's true, or maybe 50 50, <laughs> it's raw <laughs> intelligence. They're peddling this to the American people in the lead up to an election, and Robert Mueller's focused on a tax case from how many years ago? How did that come up? How did this, how did we evolve into this when there's real evidence of real Russian paid information to lie to the American people in the election? Well, and Sean, our entire justice system right now is inverted. This is the kind of corruption that you see in third world countries. Look at McCabe. They moved him. They were going to let him retire until everyone came out publicly calling for him to be fired so he didn't get his retirement. Look at Strzok, look at, he fired, look at Page, resigned, or should have been fired yesterday or much earlier, now that we know this. It's absurd, and, and again, the bottom line, the crux of all this is that FISA warrant that was obtained, and we all keep talking about that no, the because crux none of, it of this, was the, the Manafort dossier, trial. Because they lied to right. the FISA court judges and committed a fraud on the court, and they said they stood up for it, but they never verified it. And then they literally and conspired to spread unverified Russian lies that Hillary paid for to influence the American people. I'm sorry, that's, that's a lot bigger than Paul Manafort's stupid place. tax case. Right. <laughs> Right, and none of that would be taking place but for a FISA warrant obtained with false information. Where's, so, you know, I, if I'm Robert Mueller, I'd be humiliated. All this evidence is out there. It's on a tee. Is it that he's that political? Is it that uh, he hired all these Democrats because he's that much of a hack and he doesn't I, care about our constitutional republic, Joe? I think what's, what has happened here is Bob Mueller has lost his way. Uh, and he's been hit in the face with an, an outrageous set of facts which show that what he is doing is legally irrelevant to what actually happened during the campaign. There was no Russian collusion. There was no communication between the Trump campaign and Russian officials. That's all nonsense and fake and was purposely put out by people in the FBI and John Brennan to blow back into the United States to get FISA warrants so they could spy on the Trump campaign. What's happened here now goes so far beyond what the Mueller case and the Manafort case. The Manafort case is a joke. It is an absolute embarrassment to the Department of Justice. It should never have been brought. And, you know, I, I just, what I think happened to Bob Mueller is he realized that everything he's done is worthless. It means nothing. That the big case is the case to frame the President of the United States. Oh, that's and why he won't, he's and done he a won't touch it. Trump. He, he doesn't won't give a touch flying it. rip. He, what you, happens you, in, uh, for the absolutely. next 18 months of the country? Absolutely. absolutely. Look, at the, look at the people he's hired. You hire Andrew Weissman, <laughs> you, you're going to go for broke. You hired the biggest hack in the country. Not many people have the distinction of putting innocent people in jail and losing tens of thousands of jobs. Absolutely correct. Absolutely yeah. correct. They what about the issue it. of these, these security clearances, Pam? Oh, gone. Not even a question. I mean, it's not even a question. Page, really? Struck? Gone. McCabe? Gone. Ors should have been gone already. All of these people, not even a close call. That's a privilege, and they have lost that privilege.
All right, you guys are phenomenal. Maybe one day, maybe the truth will dawn on them that there's real information. Michelle Malkin, Dan Bongino, they react to the despicable, vile comment made about Trump supporters, yeah, on your so-called conspiracy TV network, NBC, and that happened earlier. Also, the president blasting New York Democratic Governor Andrew Cuomo and his ridiculous statement, America's never been great. Really? Tell that to the heroes of World War II. We'll continue. All right, Democrats, mainstream media continue to go low. They say they go high. As we explained in our opening monologue earlier today over there at Conspiracy TV, MSNBC on Liberal Joe, John Heileman made this outrageous comment. Take a look. I like the idea that, that, that you know, you see use the examples, the bad example of like what would be the core that would say it was okay for Donald Trump to dissolve media institutions because media institutions are super unpopular. I would like a pollster to test this question. How many people in the Republican Party think that it would be okay for Donald Trump to dissolve their own grandparents? I'm virtually certain that if it was a Donald Trump related question, you'd get like 10% that would be like, Donald Trump has the power to do whatever he wants, including kill my parents. How many people in the media would be angry at Donald Trump if he cured cancer? Seriously? Kill our parents? And then, of course, you have the liberal governor from the state of New York, Andrew Cuomo, saying, America never was great. Oh, okay, we'll tell that to the brave men and women that helped defeat uh, communism, which, opp which oppressed how many millions and killed how many millions in the former Soviet Union, and fascism, and Nazism, and Imperial Japan, and on and on and how America has sacrificed for so many around the world in so many different ways. Here with reaction, former Secret Service agent, NRA TV contributor Dan Bongino, the host of Michelle Malkin Investigates, CRTV, it's award-winning, Michelle Malkin. Um, you know, it's either we're irredeemable deplorables, Michelle, or we're smelly Walmart people. I like Walmart. Matter of fact, I love Walmart. Walmart's great. Um, and Target and, and Costco, I love those stores. Um, or irredeemable deplorables clinging to our God gun family or religion or we smell in Walmart, shop in Walmart. This is so condescending, disgustingly condescending, when they're the sheep that just echo each other in their little echo chamber. Yeah, and that certainly was proved by this coordinated campaign by all of these groupthink media outlets to attack President Trump for his very legitimate criticism of their political operative propaganda, which masquerades as neutral reporting. And what we saw there with John Heilman, I love it. You know, at first I thought, who the heck is this guy? I've, I had really never been familiar with his work. Um, he is somebody who masquerades as a documentary um, filmmaker, and he's allowed to get away with comments like this. I mean, he's got contempt for Trump voters and independent thinkers that's coming. It's like oozing out of his pores. Uh, and it is that exact kind of elite media condescension that put President Trump in large part in office show. in the first place. So please keep going. Please double and triple down on that because it worked so well for you, liberal media, you in know, 2016. I'm really proud of the fact, even though Fox tried to make me so many years, I'd always... <coughs> I don't feel good. I never made it to a White House Correspondents Dinner because I didn't want to hang out with these people. Uh, I'll hang out, Dan Bongino, with the smelly Walmart people, the irredeemable deplorables that cling to their Bibles, God, gun, and religion over them any day. And because they're the ones that actually make the country great and work hard and pay their taxes, play by the rules, obey their laws, raise their children to be good citizens. Uh, I prefer them. Yeah, Sean, I'm always comfortable around the B people, right? The bus boys, the bartenders, and the bouncers. I don't need to know the owner of the bar. I'm with you, man. I grew <laughs> up working for a living, now. right? Um, yeah, I, hey, listen, you know, I, my fingernails, I, you know, they're still, get, they're still dirty from when I was a kid working in a cemetery. But, Sean, I read an op-ed piece not that long ago that really changed me. It said one of the most successful fights we've had public relations-wise in the country was the battle against smoking. And why was that? It's because everybody knew a smoker, right? A parent, a brother, they knew how to talk to them. The Democrats have zero interest whatsoever in the media in learning how to talk to people across America who found meaning in the Donald Trump presidency. That is why they will continue to lose, as I've recommended to, the, uh, to my audience over and over again. The new rules are now in effect. The new rules are this. You guys are fighting with brass knuckles. We were fighting with 20-ounce gloves. The cutesy stuff is over. We yeah. win, you lose on life, on taxes, on everything. The new rules are in effect.
Michelle, Donald Trump, if he was running in November, he'd win re-election. I don't care who they put up. I don't see him losing. Yeah, I, I do too. And, and, and you know what? You mentioned Andrew Cuomo's comments. And those folks in New York uh, are among the most unrepentant smear merchants of uh, Americans who don't believe the same things they do. And uh, I, I thank them for their candor in voicing their contempt for American values. Please keep going, Cynthia Nixon, Andrew Cuomo, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Um, I have a, a great friend in Rob O'Donnell who leads a group called uh, listen, Brothers Before it's Others. It's Nancy Pelosi and, and, and Maxine Waters' party. I don't want them to lose. Yes. Yes, and I just want to say about uh, about New York uh, that it is the brave men and women who worked for the police department and the fire department who are most offended by the dripping contempt and hatred, vile hatred, that those New Yorkers you know, have for people who have made America great. By the way, Cuomo once said people like me are not welcome in New York. Last thing, he's, he has his own security detail. Um, he's running against the NRA, uh, which I know you work for, Dan. Interesting. I bet all his security detail are armed, aren't they? Hey, listen, you know the elites, right? What's good for the goose is not good for the gander. That's how they roll, Sean. We're, we're just the great unwashed to them. Sad. All right, guys, good to see you both. When we come back, new details of a really disturbing story out of California. Authorities just arrested an alleged member of ISIS who entered the country as a refugee. And we have an update on the extremist compound in New Mexico. Trace Gallagher has a full report. We got reaction, Geraldo Rivera versus Dr. Sebastian Gorka. You don't want to miss a minute. And Rush Limbaugh, straight ahead. Okay. All right, tonight we are following two other very troubling stories. One, an alleged members of ISIS arrested in California. And there's also an update in the New Mexico compound horror story. Trace Gallagher is at our West Coast Bureau with the very latest tonight. Trace. Sean, when the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force swarmed that Sacramento apartment complex, you knew it was a high-level target. Prosecutors say 45-year-old Omar Amin was a hitman for ISIS and Al-Qaeda, a founding member of Al-Qaeda in Iraq, and a high-ranking ISIS terrorist. Back in 2012, Amin fled from Iraq to Turkey, where he applied to be a U.S. refugee. He was granted that status in June of 2014. But instead of going directly to the U.S., court records say he went back to Iraq, where he shot and killed an Iraqi police officer. Five months later, Amin was living in the U.S. Authorities say his refugee application was riddled with lies, but because many countries don't have extensive documents on their citizens, a complete background check is nearly impossible. Experts say Omar Amin is a prime example of why President Trump implemented the travel ban. Amin will now be extradited back to Iraq to face trial and a possible death penalty. And there is breaking news from that New Mexico compound where 11 children, ages 1 to 15, were found living in horrific conditions. Bones found on scene have now been identified as a three-year-old boy, Abdul Wahaj. He's the boy the FBI says was part of an exorcism to expel his demons and who died of a seizure after his father refused to give him medicine. The father then allegedly told the other children Abdul would come back as Jesus and tell them who to kill. The five adults at the compound facing child abuse charges were set free by a judge until trial and now the prosecutor says he is planning to appeal the judge's decision. Sean. All right, Trace, thank you. Here with Reaction, the author of Why We Fight, Fox News National Security Strategist, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, also the author of another bestseller, The Geraldo Show, Fox News correspondent at large, Geraldo Rivera. Geraldo, liberals, they don't want ICE. They want open borders. They don't want vetting. They don't want a travel van. If we want to keep our family, our American family safe, why isn't anyone who wants to come visit, why don't they get vetted? And they've got to pay for it for the pleasure of visiting us. And build a border wall with a big door. If we do these things, we'll be safer. The American people will benefit. Why don't we do these simple things? Well, Sean, in this case specifically, it seems to me that you had a notorious killer, an ISIS, formerly Al-Qaeda, 
fighter, later commander, who was well known in his hometown for planting IEDs, for kidnapping, for robbery, and for this murder with which he is charged and on Monday will be hopefully extradited back to Iraq. It seems to me that very little background checks were made. How about we keep they him They believed in jail? him when he said he was not a terrorist. It was ridiculous. Dr. Gork, why don't we just keep him in jail? <laughs> well, the, they'll, this they'll, is, they'll try him for murder in Iraq and he'll be executed, I, I believe. This, um, this okay. is the case study of why the travel ban had to happen. This is why Donald Trump became president. This is why the wall was the first policy platform that he built his campaign on. It's just common sense. The, the fact, for example, that under the Obama administration, you couldn't check somebody's social media accounts to find out, find out if they had jihadist proclivities, that's how you get the San Bernardino massacre with 14 Americans killed at a Christmas party. The system is broken, it's being fixed right now, but it's just the same as when you control who comes into your house, we have to control who comes into America. Well, Common sense. Yes, common, it's common sense. sense there's a big difference. But there's a big difference between a 45-year-old ISIS battle-hardened terrorist murdering fiend and a 25-year-old uh, apricot picker from Mexico. I mean, please to to equate uh, these. How about we is just vet everybody? Moral equivalent. How about we just vet everybody and we control it? There's I, no I'm control. okay with that. I'm okay with vetting everybody. I'm okay with vetting everybody. See, I I would, I would, I would look at New Mexico. I've changed him. Sure. I have, I've had a profound impact on his thinking, Dr. Gorka. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. I knew yeah, it would be drinking vodka but, instead but, of but tequila sure. the other night. Let's, let's look right, at we. New Mexico. New Mexico, another utter failure of common sense. Who is the court system oh. meant to protect the most? Oh. The vulnerable, the aged, the children. The they idea that no these bail? people are let out, let out without bail right. after a four-year-old is killed or dies on that it's compound. Insane. It's all right, guys, and, I and Paul Manafort is held pre-trial because yeah, 23 hours he's a, a day. threat to flee. Ma right, Rush Limbaugh, when we come back, sounding off on John Brennan losing his security clearance. You don't want to miss that. Next.